Dehydration synthesis, polymers, anabolism, catabolism, hydrolysis, monomers, they all have something to do with metabolism, but what? And these monomers, individual units, they can be used to build up big complicated things that we call polymers, and polymers can be broken down into their individual monomers. But how does all this work? First, let's get a handle on some of this vocabulary. So catabolism literally means to throw down, breaking down large, complicated molecules into small ones. The word anabolism is the reverse, using small units to build large, complicated molecules. Both of these words taken together are what we refer to as metabolism, which literally just means change. Now that word monomer, mono, just means one, if you take two monomers and you join them together, you make a dimer. Di, of course, means two. We're going to use dimers to symbolize a polymer. Poly means many. Real polymers look more like this, and as you can see, they're very complicated. If you break all of those bonds, you release those monomers again. So the two questions are, how do monomers get put together to form polymers? And how do polymers get broken down into monomers? Monomers get built up into polymers via reactions called dehydration synthesis. The name tells you so much about what's going on. Dehydration, right? Water comes out. Synthesis means to build. If that makes sense to you, you've got it. So we've got a little bit more chemistry here. I'm showing you two hydroxyl groups. Just watch the atoms in blue and water comes out. That's dehydration. You knew that already. And that new bond up here, that's the synthesis. We just built a new bond. Now this doesn't happen by itself. You actually need an enzyme and energy for this. If you want to know more about enzymes, please check out this video. Now going the other way, polymers to monomers, that happens by hydrolysis. Again, watch the name. You see hydro, that means water of course, and lysis means to loosen, to break, or to burst. So we're going to go the other way. We're going to hydro it, we're going to add water, and then we're going to lyse the thing. It's going to break. Now again, for hydrolysis, you also need an enzyme. So it really is very simple. Monomer to polymer, water comes out, and that's dehydration synthesis. Polymer to monomer, add water, and lice hydrolysis. Now the fantastic news about this is the four macromolecules of life get built up and broken down in exactly the same way. Let's look at a little bit more detail with carbohydrates. I've got glucose and fructose. Keep track of these guys here in red. We're going to run dehydration synthesis to make the disaccharide sucrose or table sugar. If you run it the other way, we've got hydrolysis going back to those individual monomers. Now if you just rinse and repeat those dehydration synthesis reactions, you can make tons of polymers polysaccharides like starch and cellulose, glycogen, and chitin, which might be new to you. That's the polysaccharide that makes arthropods like this coconut crab so crunchy. All of these polysaccharides are built via dehydration synthesis reactions from individual glucose monomers. Now with lipids and proteins and nucleic acids, the chemistry gets a little bit ugly, so I'm not showing the details here, but the basic principle is still the same. When you want to attach fatty acid tails to glycerol to make a triglyceride, water comes out and that's dehydration synthesis. To go the other way, that's hydrolysis. So all four macromolecules of life are going to follow these same principles. Monomer to polymer, dehydration synthesis, polymer to monomer, hydrolysis. And yeah, that's it. I hope that was helpful. If it was, slam some buttons below and I will see you in the next one. Good luck.